Peace and power to everyone. I am up. I have an order that I have to get out tomorrow, so I'm going to be up. Just want to share with you all. I hope everyone is doing well. Welcome back to my YouTube family. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you, and don't forget to share, like, and comment. Yeah, I know I did a little pause because I had a little brain freeze, but it's cool. So, this just came up on the timeline. I subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm into herbs. It's called Superfood Evolution. Just gonna enjoy this right quick. <laughs> A top protein rich superfood and multivitamin. Spirulina is a species of edible blue green algae that naturally grows wild in tropical and subtropical ponds, lakes, and alkaline waterways. The genus Arthrospira is among the diverse class of single celled cyanobacteria identified to have played a primary role in creating the Earth's life sustaining atmosphere nearly 2.3 billion years ago. Along with phytoplankton, this group of ancient algae also contributed to the basic foundation of the food chain, essential to developing some of the first life forms on the planet. Acquiring energy through the process of photosynthesis, spirulina is particularly known for its ability to convert sunlight into green, concentrated sources of protein, fatty acids, antioxidants, as well as certain vitamins and minerals. Historically, it was utilized as a nutritional food source in regions of Lake Texcoco or Tenochtitlan, present-day Mexico City, by Mesoamerican cultures like the Aztec peoples who called it Tequitlatl. Right. Utilized as a nutritional food source in regions of Lake Texcoco or Tenochtitlan, present-day Mexico City, by Mesoamerican cultures like the Aztec peoples who called it Tequitlatl. Likewise, it was also harvested by civilizations surrounding the large, shallow, fresh waters of Lake Chad, bordering West and Central Africa. Spirulina was coined the best food for the future because of its excellent capacity at producing high-quality, condensed, complete protein and essential micronutrients more efficiently than many other foods or microalgae. Yielding more protein on less land and water than any other staple crop, it has in the last several decades been applied for use as a cultivated food in self-sufficient water tank systems in parts of West Africa susceptible to soil deficiency and subsequent malnutrition. In these communities, the children are known to call spirulina mixed into water their green medicine. It was also popularized by NASA when it was successfully utilized as a nutritional food supplement by American astronauts, after which time it was extensively researched as a potential cultivar for long-term space travel. Moreover, in 2016, it was again proposed by NASA as a possible food source for enabling a sustained presence on Mars. Spirulina also makes an ideal top 10 superfood for modern day living because of its energizing nutrients and detoxifying compounds, both of which promote heightened mental acuity and increased immune response. The blue-green pigment called phycocyanin is, in addition, a potent anti-inflammatory agent helpful for many common health issues. Along with phycocyanin, Arthrospira contains a vast array of other antioxidants within its spiral-shaped cellular structure, including chlorophyll, beta-carotene, and zeaxanthin. Additional top nutrients include B vitamins, gamma-linolenic acid, GLA, iron, nucleic acids, and various polysaccharides. Dietary supplements, typically used as a powder or in tablet form, are usually cultivated in controlled and monitored man-made reservoirs not obtained from wild sources that can be potentially contaminated with harmful cyanotoxins discussed later in this video. While it is a non-toxic algae, it is best to consume commercial products that maintain purity and nutritional composition. When properly grown, harvested, and dried, it can be one of the most potent superfoods available to humans. 
microalgae, depending on one's taste perception, is known to have either a subtly sweet, nutty characteristic, or can have a green seafood-like flavor. These features, however, are sometimes contingent on the quality of the product. It is more frequently consumed as a green superfood powder, often added to blended drinks, or used by many health enthusiasts as a salad topping. What is spirulina? Spirulina, from the genus Arthrospira, is an edible form of blue-green algae or cyanobacteria that is safe to consume by humans, animals, and aquatic life. Its name is derived from the Latin word spirula, which means small spiral. This is because on a microscopic level, it is made up of tightly coiled or loose spiraling cellular strands. Growing as a free-floating layer close to the water surface, the blue-green colored biomass thrives in saline, alkaline water bodies with a pH around 8.5 and prefers temperatures that range between 86 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It naturally grows wild in tropical and subtropical regions of Mexico, Central America, Asia, Central Africa, and the southern U.S. However, it is usually not the type of microalgae or microscopic algae that is harvested from wild regions, but is typically cultivated in a controlled and monitored environment such as shallow water ponds or tank systems. Aquaculture scientist, author, and philosopher Christopher Hills, often called the father of spirulina, is one of the first early pioneers acknowledged for his major role in popularizing spirulina as a global food source. His research culminated in the successful large-scale production of spirulina and first commercial product distributed by the company Lightforce. Used both as a compressed dietary supplement and whole food green powder, products are commonly manufactured in areas such as Hawaii, Mexico, Africa, Japan, and Ecuador, locations ideal for outdoor cultivation. The two main Arthrospira species produced commercially are Arthrospira or Spirulina platensis and Arthrospira maxima, with A. platensis making up most of the world's dietary supply. Industrially, these cyanobacteria species have been used as a feed source in the aquaculture, aquarium, and poultry industries. Flakes are frequently used in fish food products all over the globe. It is also utilized in cosmetics, skin care products, and by the food and beverage industry as a natural coloring agent. Spirulina Cultivation Techniques Spirulina is farmed using either an open pond system or a closed system, with each method having their own separate advantages and disadvantages. Most commercial production facilities use open pond systems, which involve outdoor, shallow, raceway-like water bodies that are continuously mixed with a type of paddle wheel. When given the proper amount of light, nutrients, and temperature, the microalgae form thick mats or blooms on the surface layer of the water. The algae biomass, in the form of a green paste or puree, is then collected, filtered, and dried, often in noodle-like pieces, and transformed into a fine powder. Arthrospira is occasionally manufactured using closed indoor systems, which involve a more controlled greenhouse-like setting. It can likewise employ advanced photobioreactor technologies, similar to how marine phytoplankton, and sometimes chlorella, is produced, but this is not as common. Spirulina's Health Benefits An Energizing Protein-Rich Food One of the most phenomenal things about this top superfood is its ability to efficiently synthesize concentrated amounts of protein in relatively short periods of time, taking in sunlight energy and converting it into a green superfuel for the body. Arthrospira platensis, when dried, contains an average total protein content of 60%, but can range anywhere between 50 to 70%, depending on the quality. It is one of the highest protein-rich foods in the plant kingdom, and includes all the essential amino acids, making it a complete protein source. The Arthrospira species, in addition, do not have cellulose walls, 
which make its protein content and other nutrients more digestible and bioavailable when consumed. Powders and supplements thus have a high PER or protein efficiency ratio. Each gram of spirulina protein is believed to be four times more absorbable than the same amount of protein found in red meat. Between one teaspoon and one tablespoon of powder mixed into blended protein shakes or smoothies can help to increase protein intake for those following a vegan, raw vegan, or vegetarian diet. One tablespoon of quality spirulina powder typically contains four to six grams of protein content. As many people today are choosing to eat less animal protein, this microalgae can be a great vegan alternative to ensure protein and amino acid requirements are being met. We also personally love the idea of not only eating low on the food chain, but also the concept behind eating one of the very first foods of creation. Nutritional Value of Spirulina Along with an ample amount of protein, spirulina also contains a nutritious spectrum of vitamins and minerals and is particularly high in beta-carotene. The B-complex vitamins thiamine, riboflavin, pantothenic acid, and pyridoxine B6, in addition to vitamins E, K1, K2, as well as significantly high amounts of iron. It is also a source of vitamin C, iodine, magnesium, manganese, and several forms of bioavailable sulfur, such as sulfur-bearing amino acids and the sulfated polysaccharide called calcium spirulan, a potent antiviral substance. While spirulina has been found to have high levels of vitamin B12, this is in the form of pseudovitamin B12, which is biologically inactive in humans. It is therefore not considered a reliable source of this essential nutrient. Like hemp seed, dried powders or supplements are also rich in GLA or gamma linolenic acid. GLA is known to reduce inflammation, help to balance hormones, treat eczema, relieve joint pain, ease the symptoms of PMS, and decrease breast tenderness in women. It also includes a small amount of other polyunsaturated fatty acids, like linolenic acid, arachidonic acid, ALA, EPA, DHA, and steridonic acid. As advertised on product labels, one teaspoon of powder can have about 32 milligrams of gamma linolenic acid, or GLA, per serving. According to nutrition data, a tablespoon has 57.6 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids and 87.8 milligrams of omega-6 fatty acids. One published review reports that the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, has asserted that the nutritional value of 1,000 kilograms of fruits and vegetables equals that of one kilogram of spirulina. This property of spirulina has enabled it to be used in long-term space missions. Used in Africa as a nutritional supplement. Spirulina, in a small-scale cultivation, is also highly valued as a nutritional supplement in West and Central Africa, where it has been utilized for decades to treat malnutrition and starvation. In the 1970s, it was declared the best food source for the future at the United Nations World Conference. The UN later joined with humanitarian groups in the mid-90s to form the Intergovernmental Institution for the Use of Microalgae Spirulina Against Malnutrition. Used extensively in the Republic of Kenya, as well as other parts of Africa, one study indicates that a dose of 10 grams per day seemed to significantly and quickly improve the nutritional status of undernourished children. It contains antioxidants, carotenoids, phycocyanin, and chlorophyll. The Arthrospira species is known to contain a full spectrum of antioxidants, including phenolic acids, tocopherols, carotenoids like beta-carotene, zeaxanthin, lutein, as well as chlorophyll and spirulina's well-known blue-green pigment, phycocyanin. It additionally supports the body's production of the enzymatic antioxidant called superoxide dismutase, or SOD. These are substances that help to boost immune functions 
prevent free radical damage to cells, stimulate the repair of oxidative damage to DNA, as well as protect and nourish the eyes and the skin. Underneath spirulina's blue-green color are the red-orange and yellow-orange carotenoid pigments such as beta-carotene, zeaxanthin, lutein, and cryptoxanthin. The microalgae is particularly high in beta-carotene, which converts to vitamin A in the body. Zeaxanthin and lutein are two components that make up the retina of the eye and protect it from UV damage. These nutrients, when consumed through dietary sources, are shown in some research to encourage healthy vision and may help to guard against various eye disorders like macular degeneration and cataracts. Benefits of the blue-green pigment, phycocyanin. Phycocyanin, or C-phycocyanin, is a water-soluble pigment protein found in both the microalgae spirulina and blue-green algae, AFA. The name phycocyanin comes from the word phyco, meaning algae, and cyan, which is a color variation of blue-green. This is one of the prominent components present in dried spirulina that has been proven in scientific research to exhibit potent anti-inflammatory effects beneficial as a supplemental adjunct in the treatment of cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases. According to research presented in the journal Cardiovascular Therapeutics, a group of hamsters fed an atherogenic diet supplemented with spirulina or its ingredient phycocyanin exhibited lower total cholesterol, LDL and VLDL cholesterol, whereas HDL cholesterol was not affected. It was also in conclusion reported that findings from human clinical trials are largely consistent with the hypolipidemic effects of spirulina observed in the preclinical studies. Phycocyanin additionally supports the body's production of the enzymatic antioxidant called superoxide dismutase, or SOD, as well as catalase. In a 2016 published journal review, it was acknowledged that spirulina activates cellular antioxidant enzymes, inhibits lipid peroxidation and DNA damage, scavenges free radicals, and increases the activity of superoxide dismutase and catalase. In other reviewed research, it was stated that CPC phycocyanin is a potential neuroprotective agent that can be applied to treat oxidative stress-induced neuronal injury in neurodegenerative diseases such as ischemic stroke, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease. In the same journal publication, the antioxidative capacity of phycocyanin is also proposed to reduce liver toxicity, offering a hepatoprotective effect. Cleansing to the blood and helps detoxify toxins. Spirulina contains high concentrations of the green pigment chlorophyll, a known blood purifier as well as lymph and liver cleansing substance. Chlorophyll-rich edible foods and drinks have healing and protective assets that help detoxify the tissues, balance body pH, and are an energizing superfood for boosting cognitive and immune functions. Dietary chlorophyll consumed on a regular basis through the intake of green juices, leafy greens, and microalgae like spirulina also encourages the growth of friendly intestinal bacteria, wards off parasites, and keeps fungal yeast strains like candida in check. Like activated charcoal, zeolites, and other detoxifying superfoods, spirulina is able to bind to heavy metals and remove them from the body. This is chiefly accomplished through antioxidants, especially phycocyanin, chlorophyll, as well as its sulfur-based constituents. In one study, analyzing the antitoxic properties of spirulina on poisonings from arsenic, cadmium, carbon tetrachloride, deltamethrin, fluoride, hexachlorocyclohexane, iron, lead, lindane, and mercury, it was concluded that it effectively counteracted these pollutants' toxic effects on the exposed organisms, and that spirulina could be a useful coadjuvant agent within clinical practice for treatment of these or other pollutant poisonings. About cyanotoxins, microcystin, and BMAA. 
recent years, there has been some controversy that cyanobacteria-based algae supplements like spirulina and blue-green algae, AFA, may contain the two cyanotoxins, microcystin and BMAA. These are contaminants known to be produced from specific cyanobacteria in their blooming stage. What is microcystin? Microcystin is not found in spirulina itself, but in cyanobacteria like Microcystis aeruginosa, which can inadvertently be collected when harvesting spirulina, especially from wild, unmonitored sources. Microcystin growth, for example, is very high in the Great Lakes region of the U.S. Microcystin is known to cause liver damage in high dose amounts. And there have been a few infrequent occurrences when low levels of microcystin have been detected in some microalgae supplements, especially low quality spirulina obtained from various retail outlets in China. What is BMAA? Under certain growing conditions, a neurotoxin called BMAA can be produced by a cyanobacteria. When consumed in concentrated amounts, it affects the central nervous system and has been linked to neurodegenerative disorders. It's important to remember, however, that most BMAA is located in wild waterways, not from quality controlled and highly monitored spirulina, where pond or tank facilities adhere to appropriate pH and saline levels that eliminate the potential of BMAA growth. In the 2014 published study, it was reported that BMAA was not detected at low limits of 80 nanograms to grams dry weight in any of the product samples. Purchasing quality spirulina products. As a precautionary measure, most all higher quality dietary products test for purity as well as other toxic compounds like heavy metals, which can come from polluted water sources. There is currently, as of 2016, no enforced purity standards required for manufacturers, so it is especially important to purchase your bulk powders and supplements from quality suppliers that are either certified organic and or maintain product testing for potential toxins. For a list of recommended spirulina products and their research testing of purity, please see the link below in the description box of this video or click on the top right button on your screen to go directly to our page. How to use Spirulina can be used as a bulk powder, an encapsulated supplement, or compressed tablet, depending on your personal preference and affinity for the taste. To those who love the flavor, it has a pleasant, slightly sweet, nutty type taste with an almost floral fragrance. To other palates, however, it can have a strong, fishy aftertaste and scent. Some of this does, of course, depend on the quality of the product. It is considered a food that can be incorporated into many recipes and doesn't necessarily need to be consumed separately. The algae powder can be added to blended drinks or is easily added straight into a bottle of water for added energizing nutrients. We personally use it in powder form, blended into protein shakes, protein bars, fresh juices, green smoothies, desserts, raw chocolate, and dressings, or use it straight as a salad topping, similar to nutritional yeast. The powder, mixed with clay and water, also makes a great do-it-yourself face mask that can be applied directly on the skin. Precautions You should avoid consuming spirulina if you have phenylketonuria, hyperthyroidism, or if you have a severe allergic reaction to seafood or iodine. Consult your health care provider before intake if you are pregnant, nursing, have a serious medical condition, or are taking prescribed medications. Thanks for watching. For additional information, links to studies, as well as sources of the best spirulina we can find, be sure and check the links in the description box below this video. Please like, share, and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Okay, y'all. I'm still here. Um, don't forget to click the link. Let's see. 
Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if there's, excuse me. If there is a, ah, goodness, another video we can watch so I can cut this short. I keep the computer playing. It starts slowing down on you. But anyway, um, just sharing. I'm gonna be up about 15 more minutes, so we're gonna watch another one. Mm -hmm. Let's find it. This is another thing that we eat a lot of play stores day and I didn't I get them to see me. Um so let's just let's just watch this. Magnesium is the fourth most prevalent element in our bodies. We need it. Turns out that magnesium is the fourth most prevalent element in our bodies. We need it. And American soils have been deficient in magnesium since the 1930s. As we American soil has been deficient in magnesium since the 1930s. Superfood evolution was the evolution presents. Kelp seaweed, a concentrated source of dietary minerals. Kelp is a general term used to describe a broad range of over 300 species of brown marine algae that grow wild in shallow open ocean waters all over the world. Many varieties of this seaweed are found in underwater giant kelp forests believed to have first appeared on Earth around 5 to 23 million years ago. Providing one of the most productive and dynamic ecosystems on the planet, giant kelp and other related species are the largest and fastest growing of all the sea vegetables. Kelps are particularly known for their efficient ability to absorb and concentrate a high amount of minerals and other micronutrients from seawater into their multicellular, thick, leaf-like blades. They are thus a highly nutritious, edible food source for many aquatic creatures and can be equally harvested, dried, and consumed as a dietary supplement for humans alike. Different kelp seaweed species have been revered throughout human history by inhabitants of coastal locations for their medicinal qualities. Mineral-rich powders or whole seaweeds nutritionally fortify the diet and are traditionally used in soup stocks for nourishing extremely emaciated or weak individuals. Many of the kelp seaweed types are specifically higher in bioavailable iodine, which is often helpful for correcting iodine deficiency. If you do not have enough iodine in your body, you cannot make the required amount of thyroid hormones. Over time, this can cause symptoms of fatigue, low metabolism, and weight gain issues associated with hypothyroidism and goiter. Today, cultivated kelp and its byproducts like algin or sodium alginate are used extensively in the food industry as a gelling medium and thickening agent. Kelp extracts are likewise used commercially in shampoos, body care products, agricultural amendments, livestock feed supplements, and many other industrial applications. Brown seed weeds are widely consumed as a regular part of the diet in East Asia, especially in Japan, China, and Korea. One of the most popular ways to use kelp varieties is when preparing traditional Japanese miso soup, 
consisting of a stock base called dashi, of which kombu is one of the main ingredients. Some common seaweeds many people are familiar with, like wakame, arame, and sea palm, in addition to kombu, all belong to the family of kelps. What is kelp seaweed? Kelp is a general term for seaweeds that come from a class of brown marine algaes, Phaeophyceae, most genera of which come from the order Laminarials and are usually an olive brown to red brown color. These distinct types range in length, nutrient profiles, and taste qualities. Although kelp is sometimes also generically referred to by the name Laminaria, not all kelp comes from this genus. One of the widely identified giant kelp species, for example, comes from the genus Macrocystis, like Macrocystis pyrifera, a fast-growing, dense, vertical underwater forest canopy that provides a diverse microenvironment for many different sea plants and creatures. All kelp species, however, are known to rapidly proliferate when they have an adequate amount of sunlight to do so. Most have gas-filled bladders called pneumatocysts, which help the plant float from its anchored location, providing buoyancy close to the surface layer. This is a sunlit zone which extends about 600 feet below sea level. Some kelp species have very thick, wide fronds, or large leaf-like blades attached to a main stipe. These fronds are multicellular and easily uptake nutrients in the waters in which they grow. This is the part of the seaweed harvested for human consumption, commonly available as a dried sea vegetable, concentrated powder, or encapsulated supplement. Some of the most common species of kelp gathered for dietary use include the following. Most species grow worldwide in temperate to arctic seawater that is between 43 to 56 degrees Fahrenheit as more nutrients are found in colder ocean waters. Sufficient nutrient levels are needed to foster their growth. Seaweed collected in colder oceanic zones is known to have a greater concentration of minerals and polysaccharides than more tropical species found in seawater closer to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The kelp species, kombu and wakame. Kelps are often loosely referred to as kombu, but not all kelp is from the main kombu species, Saccharina japonica. This is a type of sea vegetable indigenous to Japan and Korea, where it is now frequently cultivated on a large scale for commercial use. Some seaweeds not of this specific species are often generically called kombu because of their thick, leathery texture and mucilaginous nature. Wakame is another Japanese species also widely consumed in Asian cultures and often sea farmed like kombu. Another highly nutritious species closely related to Japanese wakame is wild Atlantic wakame, which grows prolifically in colder northern climate zones like the coastal waters of Iceland, where it's referred to as Morink Jani. As we mentioned, other sea vegetables are considered a type of kelp, including popular varieties like sea palm and arame. However, these species generally have different nutritional components than the larger kelp variety we are discussing here in this video. When purchasing seaweed, it is especially important to select higher quality brands that are from more pristine seawaters located in the northern hemisphere. Some seaweeds are now additionally tested for chemical pollutants and radioactive isotopes that are sometimes present in ocean waters. Health Benefits of Kelp Seaweed source of iodine, helpful for thyroid function. Iodine is a particularly important micronutrient essential for healthy thyroid function and its hormone production. Because iodine is not naturally produced by the body, it needs to be consumed through dietary sources. Seaweeds can be excellent whole food choices for iodine supplementation and can help to protect the thyroid gland and its primary role in regulating metabolism. All kelps are classes of brown seaweeds that are known to be predominantly efficient at absorbing iodine from oceanic environments. In a study published by the National Academy of Sciences, it was emphasized that 
brown algae with the laminarials, kelps, or the strongest accumulators of iodine among living organisms. For the average person, consuming kelp in foods or as an encapsulated powder can provide an easy way to meet essential iodine requirements necessary for maintaining proper metabolic functions and is especially appropriate when mineral deficiency is an issue. While we feel that adding some kind of seaweed to the diet on a frequent basis can be beneficial by delivering a well-balanced ratio of minerals and nutrients, some varieties may be more suitable for some people than for others. It is important to note that on rare occasions some individuals may be sensitive to the higher amounts of iodine found in kelp and may wish to consume other sea vegetables like nori or dulse instead as a way to prevent potential iodine overdose. Why we may need more iodine. All of the amount of iodine humans require daily is largely debated by many health professionals. The dose currently recommended by the USRDA is 150 micrograms per day in adults who are not pregnant or lactating. Many health experts argue that these numbers, which were originally intended to prevent goiter, do not take into account the increasing amount of goitrogens present in today's world. When accumulated, goitrogenic substances can interfere with iodine uptake in the thyroid gland. Iodine deficiencies are known to occur from daily exposure to common chemicals like bromine, chlorine, and fluoride, all of which displace iodine and prevent its proper absorption. Bromine is found in such things as computer plastics, pesticides, soft drinks, baked flour products, medical drugs, and fire retardants. Chlorine and fluoride are also found in tap water. The thyroid can also uptake radioactive iodine like cesium-137 when there is iodine deficiency, increasing the risk of thyroid cancer. In some cases, as with the nuclear Fukushima disaster in Japan, it may also be necessary to take a high-quality, concentrated iodine supplement to protect the thyroid gland from exposure. A 2013 published review in the journal Thyroid was concluded that we propose that the International Council for the Control of Iodine Deficiency Disorders considers the importance of these studies and recommend for pathologies of tissues that take up iodine, primarily thyroid, mammary, and prostate glands, and potentially pancreas, gastric, and nervous systems, and under the care of a physician, an iodine intake of at least 3 mg a day in the form of I2 molecular iodine. Conversely, according to the American Thyroid Association, ingestion of greater than 1.1 mg of iodine per day, tolerable upper limits for iodine, is not recommended and may cause thyroid dysfunction. Although it is important to note that some research does indicate that too much iodine in the diet can indeed increase risk of developing iodine-induced thyroid disorders in certain susceptible individuals, these incidences are not pertinent to all people. In a published 2014 review entitled Consequences of Excess Iodine, it was determined that although excess iodine exposure generally does not result in any apparent clinical consequences, thyroid dysfunction can occur in vulnerable patients with specific risk factors, including those with pre-existing thyroid disease, the elderly, fetuses, and neonates. Iodine Deficiency and Hypothyroidism Often associated with iodine deficiency, hypothyroidism or an underactive thyroid gland is a condition that is becoming more prevalent in today's modern world. This is a disorder in which the thyroid is not producing enough thyroid hormones needed for optimal balance. When discussing ways to help balance thyroid hormones in treatment or prevention of both hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism and overactive thyroid, there are many complex factors involved with each unique individual, including one's current state of health. It is important that you do your own research and seek the advice of a qualified endocrinologist or medical physician to help evaluate your own distinct hormonal profile using the appropriate laboratory testing procedures. The conventional way to test relies primarily on the TSH test to diagnose a thyroid condition. But this method is believed to be highly inaccurate by many leading holistic health authorities. 
It is often recommended that a complete analysis should not just rely on standard TSH testing, but should also include tests for total T4, free T4, total T3, free T3, and the reverse T3. High in other minerals. Wild kelp that is nourished by a nutrient-rich seawater found in pristine, colder marine environments in the northern hemisphere is known to be one of the most potent sources of minerals available in the plant kingdom. Compared to other sea vegetables, it is definitely one of the more nutrient-dense varieties and on our top 10 superfoods list for this reason. Aside from its very high iodine concentration, it is also a source of iron, magnesium, chromium, calcium, sodium, and potassium, as well as lower amounts of zinc and selenium. When consumed in its natural, unrefined state, kelp offers these minerals in a bioavailable form for greatest absorption and nutritional utilization. Many people today suffer unknowingly from mineral deficiency because of a past history of poor eating habits and or because of the low mineral content present in many cultivated foods we consume on a regular basis. Compared to previous generations, there is much less nutrients in mass-produced food crops predominantly due to topsoil depletion from unsustainable farming practices. Kelp powders and seaweeds can be added to foods as a salt replacement while simultaneously providing supplementation for various dietary minerals you might be deficient in. Adequate mineralization from proper nutrition has been known to soothe the nervous system, enhance cognitive functions, and improve general emotional well-being. Other options we recommend for additional dietary mineral uptake include nutritive herbal teas, green juices, shilajee, as well as supplements like vitamin mineral green and condensed ionic mineral solutions. We always promote growing your own foods whenever possible, so you can control what minerals go into the soil. Kelp seaweed extracts or freshly harvested sea plants act as a natural fertilizer and can be added as a concentrated tea solution or used directly on your garden soil. Some commercial soil mixes often include kelp as one of the main nutritive ingredients. Good source of vitamin B6. Kelps are also relatively high in vitamin B6 or pyridoxine. B6 is an important nutrient for many systems of the body and is essential for proper brain development and functioning. It is needed to make the mood balancing hormones serotonin and norepinephrine and is helpful for the production of melatonin. High in beneficial polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, specifically structural polysaccharides, as opposed to storage polysaccharides, are long-chain sugars that support immune functions, nourish the skin, soothe inflammation, detoxify the body, and are a source of dietary fiber. Kelp seaweeds are known to contain a considerable amount of algin, alginic acid, and are also a rich source of other polysaccharides like sulfated fucoidin and laminarin. According to a 2013 study, brown seaweeds have no land equivalents in terms of their specific components of fiber, alginate, primarily carotenoid, fucoxanthin, sulfated polysaccharide, fucoidin, and laminarin, and polyphenol defense compounds, each of which has been reported to have strong anti-cancer activity. Algin or alginate. Algin is a viscous fiber high in mucilaginous compounds that helps to chelate heavy metals, absorb radiation and toxins from the digestive tract, and further eliminate them from the body. In one study using an alginate-pectin combination, results showed that a reduction in toxic heavy metals was achieved without side effects. In another study, a solution of sodium alginate was used to effectively remove heavy metals from industrial wastewater. Sulfated Fucoidin Fucoidin is a sulfated polysaccharide that has been shown to help reduce inflammation in the body and additionally acts as a chemoprotective compound. In a published 2015 study entitled 
Fucoidin and cancer, a multifunctional molecule with anti-tumor potential. It was stated that Fucoidin, a natural component of brown seaweed, has anti-cancer activity against various cancer types by targeting key apoptotic molecules. It also has beneficial effects as it can protect against toxicity associated with chemotherapeutic agents and radiation. Laminarin and Fucoxanthin Kelp seaweeds contain the brown algae polysaccharide laminarin, made up of beta-glucans known for their positive immune-modulating influence. In one documented 2014 study analyzing laminarin's anti-tumor effects for those with colon cancer, it was concluded that laminarin may be used for the therapy and prevention of certain types of digestive tract cancers, and therefore drug preparations must be determined for future clinical application. Fucoxanthin is a carotenoid pigment found in numerous classes of microalgae and is especially prominent in kelp and other brown marine algae species. In research published in the journal Marine Drugs, it was stated that the anti-cancer effect of fucoxanthin and its deacetylated metabolite, fucoxanthinol, is well documented. And thus, in addition to decreasing the frequency of occurrence and growth of tumors, Fucoxanthin has a cytotoxic effect on cancer cells. Purchasing high quality seaweeds. When it comes to purchasing seaweeds, quality is especially important. While seawater contains a wealth of minerals and phytonutrients beneficial to health, it can also be contaminated from human created substances like petroleum residues, radioactive isotopes, sewage waste, pesticides and herbicides, as well as heavy metals. It is therefore particularly important that the seaweeds we consume not only come from pristine ocean waters that are less likely to be exposed to these toxic substances, but also seaweeds that undergo testing through independent inspection to monitor potential impurities. We also recommend suppliers who have taken additional measures to provide organic certification. It is best to therefore avoid most of the kombu and wakame seaweeds cultivated off the coast of Japan due to the higher potential of radioactive contaminants from the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster. Most higher quality seaweeds available today often come from the colder, more pristine northern hemisphere zones. Top recommended kelp seaweed brands. Main Coast Sea Vegetables offers the most thoroughly tested seaweeds available and are OCIA certified organic. Seaweed Iceland, harvested from notoriously clean and pollution-free waters of the Rake Janes Peninsula located at the southwestern end of Iceland. Mountain Rose Herbs offers cultivated, organically grown kelp seaweed sourced from controlled Icelandic seawater pools, available as a powder or encapsulated product. Types of kelp seaweed. Dried whole seaweed. These are larger, raw, dried pieces or long strips of kelp that vary widely in size, thickness, and textural qualities. Powder comes granulated or as a fine powder. Tablets or capsules sold as encapsulated kelp powders or compressed tablets. It is important to choose a reputable brand when purchasing supplements as they are not usually regulated for purity. Kelp noodles, a fairly recent invention made from the sodium alginate or algin extracted from certain kelp species. Fresh seaweed, freshly harvested seaweeds that can be dried or used directly in recipes. How to use. Any raw, dried kelp seaweed in the form of granules, powder, or whole pieces can be directly added to foods and hot liquids. Traditionally, kombu is a very important ingredient used to flavor and thicken miso soups and stews in countries like Japan, China, and Korea. Thicker pieces of dried kelp, wakame, or kombu, when simmered into soup stocks, are known to release many of their polysaccharides and other beneficial nutrients into the broth liquid. After the heating process, the seaweed is much softer and can be eaten straight, Japanese style, or removed. 
dried, long kelp pieces are often used when cooking grains and especially beans to help increase their digestibility and reduce flatulence. These whole, dried varieties can likewise be pickled into cultured vegetables or fermented into tempeh, but should be first soaked to remove excess mucilage. Other softer kelp species can be sliced and used in seaweed salads along with other laminarials like arame and sea palm. Most all types will expand to about five times their dried weight when soaked in liquid. Kelp noodles are also now a common item found in many western health food stores. They are a slightly processed but raw version of kelp made by extracting the sodium alginate, adding water and forming it into a clear noodle-like shape. They are best when softened slightly by heating or marinating. Kelp granules or powder can be sprinkled on foods as a salt substitute or incorporated into marinades as the glutamate content enhances flavor and tenderizes other foods used with it. However, remember that kelp can sometimes have a strong, fishy flavor that is often best when used in savory dishes or camouflaged into recipes as a thickening agent. We add kelp to our raw soup recipes, miso soups, homemade black bean tempeh, and use kelp noodles in our raw mac and cheese. Although kelp is also available as tablets or capsules, these supplements are often a lower quality. If you prefer to consume kelp in this form, we recommend making your own encapsulated powders from higher quality powders for greater nutritional value and purity. Precautions Seek the advice of your medical physician if you have had a pre-existing thyroid disease or are currently diagnosed with a thyroid condition. Avoid iodine supplements and kelp seaweed products if you are sensitive to excessive intake or have severe allergies to fish or seafood. For additional information and links to the best kelp sources we have found, be sure and check the description box below this video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. And be sure and check out these other related videos. Okay, um, um, that is one of the items that we have started incorporating in our diets around here. We eat it raw. But I just tried for the first time with some rice and it was awesome. I cooked some salmon and put some seaweed in the rice and I made a ginger pineapple glaze and it was awesome. So um, peace and power to everyone just want to share and I'm out of here.